So today we will start uh, just uh, extending the concept of the single-ended solid DC architecture to differential. So I prefer to draw it because uh, if I just show you the all ready-made uh, drawings, it may not help you to understand it well. So I draw it and then specifically here, as you can see, the comparator is used in fully differential mode in the sense that the input of the comparator is receiving the V in minus V ref at the positive side as well as negative side. One is related to V in plus or V in positive minus V ref positive and V in minus minus V ref minus on the negative depth. So therefore, this kind of comparator also may not work the way we want in unity gain feedback mode. Therefore, as we uh, the discussed before, we don't need really to store the offset on the hold capacitors. We actually uh, reduce the offset of comparators separately using uh, offset compensation techniques. And one thing to avoid uh, confusion between op amp and comparator symbol. So I add this kind of transition symbol so that it shows it's a comparator. So therefore, now both of them, both terminals at the input are receiving the signal and is fully differential. So therefore, naturally, we will have two capacitor arrays. So this is the price always we pay when we move, move to differential architectures. So I show the capacitive array. I show only four capacitors of this array for simplicity and I show dotted lines, just three dots to show any number of the capacitors, any number of capacitors which may be in this array. So the first two capacitors are C and the last two capacitors are the largest capacitors and sizing is binary weighted. So the top plate of capacitors, same as single-ended, can be connected to ground, can be connected to the full scale, can be connected to input signal, which is now V in positive. So therefore, so, this is the arrangement for connection of top plate of the positive side capacitors. So, here there is a switching arrangement, therefore, we have vertical lines also, which shows the other switching arrangement for top plate. So, these are all connected. and connected to ground. So this is one arrangement. The other arrangement which is shown here, I take it out here to simplify. And avoid crowding the figure. So this has two arrangements. V input positive and V full scale. Sorry, this is not that connection. Yeah, that's the other connection I corrected. Okay, I redraw it. So, top connections are shorted. And they are brought to this point. Which is the location of the switch. So therefore, therefore we have one location for switching here. And one set of locations which are shown 
between ground and actually the connection to the top. It can be understood. Yeah, so we have similar arrangement at the other side. So, got to show common mode. We need a common mode at the beginning to set at the input of the comparator. This is also kept. So we have now dual on the other side. So I show the dual capacitors exactly same network with the same type of connections for the negative side. Here I have more space, so I make it bigger so so that the upper part also will be understood using this So same binary weighting at the negative side as well. So the system R. And of course output of the comparator will go to SAR control logic and shift register which controls the switches. So I just use arrow to show the control to avoid crowding of the, the diagram. And then output bits will come B and minus one to B zero. So it's a similar arrangement. We have either ground connection, we have common mode connection, and we have input connection. And to be full scale. Common mode is only extra here, which is shown for the comparator. Okay, so because I have some space, I try to accommodate the connections right over here. So this is generic, therefore I write first phase over here. 
So in the first phase, we want to eventually store or sample the input. So therefore, we are tracking and storing the input. We have VCM connection active and input connections active. Therefore, top plate will be connected to the inputs. Here in this arrangement, I have shown to V full skill, but now will be connected. So that's why I write here. When I write here, say for example, VCM and comma V in P. Similarly, VCM and V in N. What I mean is that the switches are connected to this voltages, top plate and bottom plate. So this way then we don't need to redraw again for each and every phase. So eventually we store same as before, V in P minus V common mode and V in N minus V common mode. This is generic. So therefore, if I show the capacitors, Say the positive side capacitors will be V in P on the top, VCM at the bottom plate. Because of the way we have drawn, it looks like the negative part is the mirror of the positive part. So like top plate is connected to VCM, bottom plate to V in N. But practically, as far as the comparator is concerned, it gives you the same uh, equation for the voltage at the negative terminal as compared to the positive terminal. Only one is with respect to V in P, one is with respect to V in N. That's the only difference. And V ref N and V ref P. Therefore, when I show uh, for the negative part, I'm following the same directions of the main diagram. Therefore, top plate becomes VCM and bottom plate becomes V in N. Therefore, this is compatible with the directions of the capacitors we have shown in the diagram. Okay, so this is phase one. So now phase two, so for other phases, I move to the next page. So this is very similar to single ended. I just, to avoid any confusion, I'm just writing it. So we disconnect now the switches from common mode. And then also we have connection to ground. So therefore, now what will happen is we have this kind of connection, for example, for the top plate. So here I write disconnect. Disconnection from VC. And also the top plate which was connected to input now will be grounded. Therefore, I write connection to ground, which is for the other terminal. So therefore, we will have this arrangement. VCM minus VMP. for the top part and for the lower part becomes ECM minus VN. Again, I'm taking care of the directions of capacitors. And then now it's uh, effectively last phase when we establish the input minus reference. Reference i. i is an integer number depending in which cycle of or which bit we are. So we are generating n bits one by one. So therefore, I, I show it in general. So therefore, this is generation of ref i by charge redistribution. So therefore, I show it in that way, 
which actually depends on the connection of the capacitors in the bank. Some of them will be connected to VREF, uh, to V full scale. Some of them still will be grounded. I don't show that. I just write uh, uh, some equivalent capacitor and then some final generated voltage to simplify the diagram. So I is the bit number I that we are generating corresponding to cycle number I of the bit generation. Okay, so this is eventually the way it is. So what we have eventually is just a VCM. This is just a common mode level, which is established. But actually we have VREF P minus V in P. And then the other side, we will have VREF N minus V in N, and they will be deducted from each other. That difference. So that is all we are doing. So it's eventually same kind of sequence of operations, only in differential. Of course, keep in mind our assumption here is all capacitors are binary weighted with respect to each other as we move from right side of the array to the left. Ratio of capacitor, say for example, if I consider Cj and Cj minus 1. So Cj is double of Cj minus 1, except the first two capacitors which are equal, unit capacitor C. Practically, this is not happening. The reason is that even if you go with common centroid layout, still you will have mismatches between capacitors and also you will have a kind of gradient of variation because specifically for large number of bits, this is a huge array. So it occupies a significant area on the chip. And therefore, it's not a small area. Therefore, as you move from right side of this capacitive bank to the left side, eventually this is your DAC, charge distribution DAC components, you will see variation of these capacitors. Therefore, now what we want to do to see now what will happen if we have some mismatch between capacitors. And if you remember, I told you instead of discussing effect of mismatch and process variation in flash ADC and resistive ladder. I will discuss it in SAR ADC and capacitive bank. So similar methodology will be applicable there. Therefore, now what we do is that for the analysis, it is easier to analyze single-ended configuration. Therefore, I will go back to single-ended, but concept is same for differential. Okay, so therefore, now we move to the analysis. If you don't have any question here, we will move to the analysis of the practical case when these capacitors don't follow exactly the binary division. There is some error or delta C difference between, say, like unit capacitors that they should show. All of them should follow unit capacitor, but they show some deviation from that. And because this is now important, because we have to now get into the non-idealities and understand also how these non-idealities are taken care so that the successive approximation ADCs are able to achieve high resolution. Okay, so right now I don't talk about what are the considerations for choosing value of C. First, we will look at the mismatch and that also considerations for choosing value of C will come later, which is a part of design.